Yippee Kai A. Something exciting has arrived in the post. Always an absolute hoot when another toy arrives in the mail. Well, it looks like it was protected enough, so that's always a nice uh, thing to see. This is as old as I am, apparently. So let's see what we got here. Okay. Um, this is the uh, Model AT 230 antenna tuner from Trio slash Kenwood. And here's a little tour of the uh, front panel. Smart looking unit, 200 watt and 20 watt scale, forward reflected. Power SWR, and that's our calibration position. We've got an SWR meter here. So the plan is I've ordered myself a, an antenna relay so I can switch between rigs, and this is going to be my antenna switch. So I'll be able to retire the uh, antenna organizer that I've got in play presently, or at least use it less often. I would just switch between rigs and antennas a lot quicker with a lot less hassle and a lot less lead swapping. So hopefully this all works really well. I'll just give you a quick look at the back as well. Here's the back of the unit. We've got antenna one, two, and three, which is a long wire. We've got our um, chat ground, and that's our input. And uh, yeah, I'm just really happy to have um, gotten hold of one of these units. Um, makes me a very happy chappy. And this comes uh, courtesy of uh, Brenton Meadows, VK3. God, I can't remember the, uh, the call sign, but I will flash it up on the screen. And uh, Brenton uh, operates a mob called Poznav, but uh, he basically is starting a fantastic radio museum and great YouTube channel, um, lots of uh, ham gear, but also CB gear as well. So um, check it out. I'll put a link below. Eighty meters, pretty scrappy tonight. We've had some uh, major electrical storms, and uh, I'll just uh, turn this down. We had some electrical storms, and it's very reminiscent of my time at sea. I remember the first time we pulled out of uh, Port Melbourne and uh, out into Port Phillip Bay, and uh, I had never been on a wireless telegraphy ship and it was my first time basically at the quay on a real ship and I was listening to the static on 500 kilohertz and just wondering how I would ever be able to receive Morse uh, under such conditions and my first couple of days were pretty scary but we managed to get through it we managed to get the job done and uh, tonight uh, I'm not going to get the job done because it doesn't sound like there's anyone listening now it's always exciting when stuff arrives in the mail and uh, we've already uh, done the ripping into this and filmed that, but of course I only filmed like half my head. Very professional. Now I've bought something to go with my brand new friend here, the A2230. And the reason why I got this was because I really wanted a manual old school tuner I really like to operate a radio. I don't like pressing a button and getting a tune. I know there's contest operators out there that love that, and it's, I'm not poo-pooing on that idea, and I'm certainly not a Luddite. I'm not anti-technology.
but there's something really wonderful about finding that dip for SWR and actually doing it yourself. And there's something beautiful in the simplicity of QRP gear and old school equipment that doesn't require a microprocessor and 10,000 relays to get it to work. So the original system that I had going here was working quite well for me was uh, I had an antenna organizer, which you can kind of see in the background there. It's a piece of um, L bracket, uh, plastic L bracket that I cut grooves out of and I've run cable through it and each one's labeled. So I know antennas on one side, rigs on the other, all labeled. And then I was using my AV1000 uh, SWR power meter as my hub. And I would plug into the bottom whatever rig I'm operating and in the top I'd throw my antenna. So swap antennas at the top, swap rigs at the bottom. Now that was working quite well for me, but we all know what's gonna happen if we keep doing that. We keep plugging and unplugging cables and whatnot. Cables are gonna fail, we're gonna have uh, problems with the cable flex, the actual connectors, strain on the connectors. It's not an ideal situation. I knew I had to do something about that. So what I did was, when I saw this tuner, A, I loved it because it's just made to sit next to this beautiful TS520 that's as old as I am and about as grumpy and poorly functioning as well. But I love it and it's still operating really nicely. It's got a beautiful receiver. It is a really venerable, fantastic old rig. Even this one, which has some issues, I love it to death. And now it's got this beautiful tuner next to it. So I can tune up on um, bands. My NFED um, inverted V is nicely resonant uh, for CW at the um, 7 uh, megahertz 40 meter band and also on 80 meters. And uh, for 20 meters and for 40 meters, I've got my vertical L antenna, which is also nicely resonant. So I can just go straight onto that without worrying about uh, SWRs. But to any of the other bands at the moment, I don't have. So now I can tune up on those bands using this tuner. And yes, I know SWR is not the be all and the end all of antenna performance. And uh, we won't have um, fantastic affected radiated power and all that sort of stuff. I know that. But I'll still be able to get out on those bands. And that will be nice. And, you know, it might not be as bad as I think it will be. But we'll see. The thing that really I found engaging about this uh, antenna tuner was it has a selector on it for three antennas. So this can be a hub for three antennas. But I still have the issue of wanting to change rigs without having to reach around the back. So what I did was I went online and I started investigating antenna switching. And on that wonderful site, AliExpress, I'm just gonna open the treasure chest. I found a kit. And this kit is actually an antenna switching kit, but I'm going to use it as a rig switching kit. And instead of switching lots and lots of different antennas to one rig, I'm going to switch lots and lots of rigs to one antenna tuner. So the input of my uh, antenna tuner will be fed with this. And this has a number of relays that will be put on the circuit board and an input and then lots of outputs. So what will actually happen is my outputs will be the rig inputs and that will all be going to that center um that center input what they say is an input will become an output and it will be fed into the antenna tuner and now we've got that um i spent the whole afternoon going to various bunning stores i went to two different bunning stores looking for a box to put all this in because if you go and buy project boxes you might as well just go and buy the new thing that you want completely constructed and with all the parts in it because the box is going to cost you as much as a new thing that's actually built so what I do is I try and uh, repurpose things that I find. So the uh, power supply that I just built, that is in an old PC case. Um, my audio filter for CW, that is in a, an old, uh, it's not even an old cache, it was a brand new cache box from the crazy dollar store, $12 for that solid metal case. Um, when I build other stuff like QRP transmitters, that's my Mooncake a transmitter in an old mooncake tin and we've got my direct conversion receiver which is in a chocolate box i try and find enclosures for my rigs that are going to be really cheap so went to bunnings and i was looking for a toolbox like this one except that it was quite a bit smaller it's probably like you know that much shorter it would have been a lot more appropriate but that uh that toolbox was $11 and that was the bait and switch toolbox. You know, the cheap thing that Bunnings always advertises but never has in stock, even though they say it's in stock in like 500 stores. So you go there and it's never on the shelf and 
usually the people that work there just go, sorry, mate, doesn't say where it is, and that's because it isn't there. And um, so you end up buying something more expensive. Well, I did buy something more expensive. I bought this toolbox. This was $14, so it's only $3 more. So it's not a big deal. It's a bit bigger than I wanted, but now I'm thinking I've only got a choice of three antennas um, on the actual tuner. So I can probably build in one side of this box and I can leave real estate in this box clear for when I get an antenna switch. And I can mount the antenna switch inside this box so it's all sitting in one case. So I've got um, rig selection here, extra antenna selection here, and then I can switch between, say, two or three antennas on this, going to two or three antennas on this. So I've got permutations and combinations of antennas coming out. My Razu. I also went to JCAR and got myself a heap of uh, BNCs um, to allow me to plug in rigs. I got myself a, a nice rotary switch for switching between the relays. And so I want you to use your imagination, but uh, this box, I put some nice feet on it and um, I bought myself a nice little knob to switch and I'll have some LEDs indicating which rig is being activated. And then over here, um, later on, I'll be able to switch more antennas and that will fit where my um, L match presently is. So all the rig switching will happen here. Antenna switching will happen for the moment because I've got enough antennas on this for um, the present layout that I've got will happen on the ATU. And um, I'll be able to go, okay, I want to work um, with my OzQRP. I'll go click, click. Um, let's go to inverted V, boom, boom, or vertical L, boom, boom. It'll all be happening, boom, boom. Sorry, too much pizza tonight. It'll all be happening via switches, not reaching around and unplugging and plugging, which um, means I can tidy up cables and I can just make things a lot more organized. Now, of course, I also went shopping at Woolworths and went past Big W and couldn't help myself, went into Big W and so, it, and I'm always looking for enclosures. And I found this, how cute is that? A tiny little cash box with uh, keys to lock it. And what I love about this uh, cash box, of course, is that A, Hey, it's the little brother of my audio filter. That is asking to be made into a QRP CW transmitter. So I'm going to make myself a CW transmitter to put in this case uh, at some point in time. I, I think I've got more projects than I can cope with. I guess you're all wondering what the inside of the, uh, of the Kenwood tuner looks like. I might quickly open it up and just let you have a look at inside it. For something that's probably like 30, 40, maybe older than that, years old, it's in really good condition. And I would be asking the, the question, how many of your auto-tune rigs um, do you think will be around and still operational in 50 years or 40 years? I don't think many. A manual tuner will essentially last forever or certainly will last longer than you will. That's also one of the wonderful things about this type of gear, the fact that you get to operate it there's elegance in that simplicity. So I'm not a Luddite, I'm not against technology, but uh, you've got to love this old school stuff. Okay, let's have a look inside. Yes. Okay, folks, as promised, we're going to have a quick look inside this tuner. The thing shipped like that, like that, like one minute it wasn't there and the next minute like a dream. Um, and this is the inside of the actual unit and you can see, look, Kenwood uh, did a, a really wonderful job of putting these things together. It smells like it's almost brand new inside to be quite honest. You've got lots of coils that look like they're soldered very well. It, they look like uh, the flux has been cleaned off most, most parts. 
Some nice uh, capacitors there. They're not, um, you know, something you'd run 3 million watts through. Certainly 100 watt rigs, 150, even 200 watts, I reckon. I don't know what this is rated to. But it's certainly going to handle what I need to put through it. Um, everything turns nicely. There's no, uh, the, there's no slop in any of these capacitors. I'm just really, really happy with the inside of this uh, thing. It is clean, it is really clean. Th however many years this has been in existence, the outside's got some cosmetics wear and tear, but the, um, you know, I think that adds charm. It certainly adds charm to my um, aging visage. If I will be keeping an eye on Mr. Meadows' uh, Brenton site. I'm hoping um, I'll be dealing with him again in the short term future. He's got some wonderful boat anchors there and. I would love to get hold of some old Heath Kit CW gear and stuff like that. Please don't tell my wife. I'll be hunting for more stuff like this because it's a little bit addictive once you start doing it. But uh, that is the inside of the uh, Kenwood AT230. I've got to look to see what it's actually called. It is my new manual tuner and I'm like a new father. Just absolutely enamored with, uh, with this thing. It's an absolute thing of joy and beauty. Earthquake. Okay, folks, 73 from the art of engineering. Um, I've really enjoyed showing you my new toys. And in the upcoming video, I'm hoping you will see the development of a relay switched rig switch that will allow me to select between different rigs in the station that will make with this uh, wonderful Kenwood uh, ATU manual which will allow me to switch between antennas so I'll be able to switch between antennas and rigs using switches rather than swapping cables. See you in the next video.